on April 14th, I will be turning 22. Wow, was this a super disappointing book. Malibu Rising. Oh my God, I have an arc. What? Oh my God, I'm so happy that I finally picked up this one because it has become one of my new favorites. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. In today's video, I will be sharing with you all the four books that I finished reading in March and the one that I plan on reading in April. I am so excited to talk about all of these, well, not all of them, almost all of them, except for one which I really did not like. But before I will tell you more about all of those books, I wanna tell you guys something super fun, which is that in a week's time, on April 14th, I will be turning 22. I just, I just had to. And that is very exciting, but what is not exciting is that this is my second quarantine birthday, which is actually really kind of depressing, but to make it a bit more fun, I am hosting a like birthday live show on Tuesday, April 13th with a lot of bookish content creators. And I'm so excited to be announcing all of my guests. And I swear to you, you do not want to miss out on this live show. I think it's going to be so much fun, not only because I want you to be there to celebrate my birthday, but also, like I said, so many amazing guests and I will be announcing them all on my Instagram in this upcoming week. So give me a follow on my Instagram if you haven't already in general as well. I do post on my bookstagram. Links to all of my other social media pages are also in the description box down below. So mark your calendars, Tuesday, April 13th from 7 p.m. until 11 p.m. Central European time. You come and join me for my birthday left show on my channel. And with that fun little announcement out of the way, let's start with all of the books that I finished reading in March. I thought I had three on the list, but I officially finished Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend on March 3rd. So it counts. This is the second book in the, what's this series called again? <laughs> the Nevermore series. And it was so much fun. I won't be like really talking about what book number two of the series is about because obviously spoilers, but very generally this one has a bit of like a murder mystery aspect to it. It was just so much fun to read about. And I feel like Jessica Townsend always incorporates really important, difficult, themes in her work as well and I thought that that was so beautifully done in this one too. I believe I gave it like a four to a five out of five stars. I'm really unsure of my rating. I think a 4.25 to be specific but it was just highly enjoyable. I love this book so much and oh my god I just love it. <laughs> if you've seen my March TBR you knew that I was playing a TBR game for the very first time because I never make TBR videos anymore. I am just so not able to stick to them that I'm just like giving up. <laughs> but in March I wanted to try and do it again and I played Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin's TBR game and the outcomes were questionable mostly probably because I didn't shuffle my cards well enough and it was a new deck of cards and they weren't really playing in my favor. But you know what? I stuck with it and I read only books that were on my TBR. I do feel though like it has confirmed that it's not really for me sticking to a TBR because I do feel like I have been in a bit of like, not per se a reading slump, but I just haven't been reading as much as I would if I just mood read. The first book that I picked up for that TBR challenge for me was Star Daughter by Shveta Takrar. And wow, was this a super disappointing book. Our main character, Sheetal, is half star, half human. And her mother has kind of like fled to the heavens for a couple of years ago. And Sheetal is getting close to her 17th birthday right now. And she is feeling like she's being called by the stars again. And the call is so strong that Sheetal loses control and a flare of starfire burns her human father, an injury only a full star's blood can heal. Sheetal has no choice but to answer the star song and ascend to the sky, but her celestial family has summoned her for a reason, to act as their human champion in a competition to decide the next ruling house of the heavens. And it sounded so magical and so whimsical, but I found that the first 100 pages of the story in which Sheetal is still like in the contemporary world, I found that part to be even better 
earth and when she ascended to the skies and where like the actual magical thing would happen. This is like highly, highly inspired by Hindu mythology. So I really like to see that and kind of get introduced to that through this book. But because I'm such a newbie to mythology just in general, I felt like sometimes I didn't really understand the mythology part of it and I wish that it was explained a little bit more in this book. Also the competition was really boring. It was more of like a talent show and the build up to the competition was so huge. It was just one big disappointment. And I felt so sad about the fact that our main character in the end of the story also really didn't learn from this whole experience. She still didn't like stand up really for herself. And I was just after I think 150 pages listening to the audiobook just to finish it instead of really enjoying it. So I believe I gave this one like a one and a half to a two out of five stars. Next up, I finally read this book and that is If I Am Being Honest by Emily Wibberley and Austin Siegman Broca. And I got gifted this book by Brit from Basically Brit a year ago when we did like a mystery book haul, like Booktuber does my book haul video. And I finally got to it. This is like a feminist rom-com and it is inspired by Shakespeare's famous shrew, Catherine. <laughs> it's inspired by a Shakespeare's play, but I have never read any Anything by Shakespeare. I'm not planning on reading anything by Shakespeare because I'm Dutch we didn't have to like learn anything about him in school. But our main character Cameron is kind of like a bitch at the beginning of this story and her crush Andrew wasn't really impressed by her bitchiness <laughs> and then Cameron takes it upon herself to tame herself and become less of a bitchy person and she tries to like make amends with the people that she has hurt in the past or has hurt in the present. She feels as though if she can prove to Andrew that she has become a better person that he will want to date her but then when she tries to make amends with another boy she gets really quite complicated feelings and to be honest it's been such a long time since I had this much fun with a YA contemporary with a romance and I really quite enjoyed the romance aspect of this book and it had a lot more deeper themes than I initially expected from it because look at this cover you just think it's like a light fluffy cute contemporary and it is but it also has themes of like having kind of like a difficult relationship with your parents and like they've been divorced and also kind of with trying to find out who you really are and what your interests are coming up for yourself, standing up against your friends if they do shitty things. So it was like a mixture of everything in here and I also really liked some of the nerdy aspects or like pop culture references that were made into this one. I felt like it wasn't like laid on too thick or being like thrown into your face because sometimes that can be the case. But I just thoroughly enjoyed this one and I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars and I highly recommend you to pick it up if it has been on your shelves for a while as well. I just thought it was a lot of fun but the beginning I did need to get through that like Cameron being a bitch face because sometimes she definitely was a bitch for no reason. <laughs> And that bothered me a lot. And then the last book that I finished in March, oh my god, I'm so happy that because of that like TBR challenge, I finally picked up this one because it has become one of my new favorites. And that is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I believe that you all know what this book is about. It's like an alternative history YA fantasy history historical book. I never know how to describe books and like the type of genre that they fall into but like three or four hundred years ago in the UK there was this queen called Queen Jane and she only reigned for nine days and then her head got cut off and she died. <laughs> wow I am so smart. And this book is like an alternative story to that. So in this one we follow three different main characters, three different perspectives, namely the one of King Edward who is kind of supposedly dying of tuberculosis. Then we have Jane who is about to become his presider? How do you call that? The one that follows him after he supposedly dies. <laughs> and Jane is also Edward's cousin. And then lastly we follow Gifford who is a horse or at least half of the day he is a horse because in this alternative England people can change 
into animals and then you are called an Ethian. And if you cannot change into an animal, you are a Verity. And three main characters that we follow are kind of like thrown into a very dangerous conspiracy. It's also about like the Ethians versus the Verities. And <laughs> this was so much fun. I knew from other people's reviews that this book was hilarious, but I did not expect to enjoy it as much myself. But oh my god, just the way of how the authors wrote this story, you can feel that they are very sarcastic and not really taking this work seriously in some way. It's just really funny to think about like humans randomly being able to turn into animals and it was just so much fun. There was a lot of banter. I love the adventurous aspects in the story as well. And oh my god, the audiobook of this one is phenomenal. The narrator can do such amazing accents and it's become one of my new faves. <laughs> I'm not really interested in picking up the other two books in this like companion trilogy because I've heard less amazing things about that and I just want to like feel all happy and positive about this one. I believe I gave this a 4.5 out of five stars. So those were the four books that I officially finished reading in March. Now on to what I am currently reading and planning to read in April. So I have four books here that I am certain of that I will be reading in April. Like I said, I usually do not make TBRs, but because for April, I just know which ones I will be reading. I'm here with an April TBR. <laughs> and the first one was actually for my March TBR, but I just got a little bit into like a reading slump and yeah, I just didn't get too Hollow Pox, the third book in the Nevermore series, but on Saturday, April 10th, I am doing a live show together with my co-host Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe because this is the third and final book that is out right now in this series that we are reading for our read-along called Wonder Along. And I am on page 145 right now and I'm gonna read it because I'm gonna have to. <laughs> like in five days the live show is there so I need to finish it but I am very excited and looking forward to it. And just the whole writing style and the Nevermore world is so magical and it's so cute so I'm already enjoying it. Then the second book that I'm currently reading already is The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. And in this book we have six fairy tales that take place in the Grishaverse and I'm trying to read all of the Grishaverse books that I own which are literally three and this is the last one that I still need to read before the show comes out on Netflix and I have read two of the six fairy tales until so far and I really did enjoy especially the first one a lot more than I initially expected so I'm looking forward to reading the rest of them and I rarely read short stories but I feel like that little push of the show coming out in like three weeks definitely helps me to pick this one up. And then the last two books that I am certain of that I will be reading them in April are by my favorite author. So the first one that I am actually already currently reading is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is a reread. If you don't know what this book is about, you have been living under a rock for a couple years, okay? <laughs> it's about Evelyn Hugo and she is like a famous Hollywood star. She was especially super well known from the 1950s until the 1980s, somewhere around that time. And like the title suggests, she has had seven husbands and you follow her whole life story throughout those seven relationships. And I... <sighs> It's one of my favorite books and I'm so happy that I will be rereading it. I'm doing a dedicated Taylor Jenkins read reading vlog because I am reading this book in preparation for reading Malibu Rising. Oh my god, I have an arc. What? This is also my first arc and for it to be written by one of my favorite authors just blows my mind. I have an advanced reader's copy of my favorite author of her newest book, which is coming out at the end of May. And we follow like the offspring of one of Evelyn's husbands, if I'm correct. So I just wanna like refresh my mind on that husband and if he was a good person or not. <laughs> and of course, it's just like a good excuse to reread this book again. I don't even really know what Malibu Rising is about. So let's find that out together, shall we? Four famous siblings throw an epic party to celebrate the end of summer. But over the course of 24 hours, their lives will change forever. Malibu, August, 1983. I always love reading about books that take place in the 80s. Oh my God. If you 
you have recommendations, let me know in the comments down below. It's the day of Nina Riva's annual end of summer party and anticipation is at a fever pitch. Everyone wants to be around the famous Rivas. Nina, the talented surfer and supermodel. Brothers Jay and Hud, one a championship server, the other a renowned photographer and their adorable baby sister Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the offspring of the legendary singer Mick Riva. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Riva mansion will have gone up in flames. But before that first spark in the early hours before dawn, the alcohol will flow, the music will play, and the loves and secrets that shaped this family's generation will all come bubbling to the surface. Malibu Rising is a story about one unforgettable night in a life of a family. The night they each have to choose what they will keep from the people who made them and what they will leave behind. I know that Brit from Basically Brit also received an arc and that she has already read it and loved it so I am looking forward to picking this one up so much but keep your eye out for a dedicated Taylor Jenkins Reid reading vlog. I am beyond excited to tell you my non-spoilery thoughts, especially on Malibu Rising. These were all the books that I read or that I plan on reading. And maybe you have also read some of the books that are on my TBR that were in this wrap up and then let me know your thoughts on them as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!